This is, we're going to make sure people look at it in their Bible, seeing it for themselves. Um, the importance of seeing it for yourself in your own Bible, marking in your Bible. I can't mark in my Bible. Get rid of your Bible. Go to our bookstore. We sell Bibles you can mark in. And, um, you know, praise the Lord. We'll even sell you a pen that you can use to mark in the Bible that you can mark in. All right. So if you've got one of those, I can't mark in at Bibles, you know, whether it's family heirlooms or whatever, don't bring that one. Bring one you can write in. All right. Because we want you to get it. You know, um, uh, Dad said something really interesting. He said, you know, listening to books, I mean, listening to tapes, reading books, and listening to people preach is really good. It's important. But you've got to make the Word of God your own. You've got to make it uh, yours. And the only way you're going to do that is to go into your Bible and do that for yourself. Amen? So, let's look here in Habakkuk chapter 2. And we're reading here. And um, we're after here. We'll just read the first four, first four verses. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and watch to see what he will say unto me and what I will answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. And though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So the, the Habakkuk here is saying that the just shall live by his faith. Look over in Romans chapter 1, if you will. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. We can really back up uh, to verse 15. So much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, that is in the gospel of Christ, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, some people say that, you know, the uh, apostles didn't have scriptures. Well, they're, they're quoting Old Testament scriptures. Their, their basis of their teaching was on the scriptures they had at hand at that time, which was the Old Testament. And they taught New Testament revelation from Old Testament scriptures. Praise God. Everybody say glory. glory. Looking over in Galatians, the third chapter. Galatians chapter 3. It says, but that it, no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Everybody said, the just yes. shall live by faith. By faith. And one more scripture reference. Let's run over uh, along this line. Let's run over to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Hebrews 10, verse 38. And it says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them which believe, or that believe to the saving of the soul. So here we have four different references in the Word of God that states uh, the just shall live by faith, or the just shall live by his faith, or, um, you know, basically saying the same thing, the just shall live by faith. Amen. Now I understand that we do live under grace. But we live by faith. Amen. You can't, you can't circumvent that or th throw that away. Now, faith operates on two facets. That is, now, you know, obviously you can probably find some different angles on some different things. But just from my teaching, um, two facets uh, of faith. The, that is faith toward or in God and the faith of God. Now, understand the faith of God operates because of your faith in God. Amen. You have faith, we, have, we do have faith toward God. We have faith in God. But then we are to exercise or use the faith of God. 
Now, 90% of Christians, you have no problem talking to them about having faith in or toward God. You know, they, 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 they have faith in God. They, they trust God. Uh, even when people are, are going through difficult times and blaming God for being sick and being poor and being defeated and bad things happening, uh, they still have a faith in God that they trust Him. That, you know, somehow everything's going to be all right. That is that side of it, me and faith in God. But then we're to use the faith of God to purposefully act upon, receive, and walk in the light of the promises he's granted unto us individually. Amen. I said amen. So that, that's primarily where we're going to focus on in, the, in our teaching is, is operating or functioning in the faith of God. And that is, um, in some cases you may call this, when you're praying, the, the, we call people, people call it the prayer of faith. And in, in all honesty, all prayers should be prayed in faith. All prayers should be prayed in faith. What we refer to oftentimes as the prayer of faith could also be referred to as the prayer of believing and receiving. You pray, you believe that you receive something, and then you have it. Amen. We, we often, we call that the prayer of faith, but it could also be referred to as the prayer of believing and receiving. Um, because, just to make it very clear, all prayer, say all prayer. All prayer. I mean, um, Paul said praying always with all manner of prayer. You know, and King James says all prayer, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance without, for all saints. Amen. But uh, praying always with all prayer, or one translation says praying always with all manner of prayer. There's different types of prayer. This isn't a prayer seminar, but, you know, so you understand what we're talking about here. There's all types of prayer. This is a prayer binding Lucy. There's the prayer of agreement. There's the prayer of what we call, like I said, prayer of faith, the prayer of, of believing and receiving. The prayer of uh, intercession, prayer of thanksgiving, prayer of worship. Amen. There's different types of prayer. There's prayer of supplication. These are different types of prayer. And all, but all prayer should be prayed in faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So even when we're praying in agreement, we should be in faith. When we're praying to bind and loose, we should be in faith. When we're praying the prayer of consecration and dedication, we should be in faith. Amen. So but we're going to major on uh, faith, how to act activate, walk in the light of, and function and operate in faith. <coughs> and um, so let's go here. And first of all, let's look at... Um, Hebrews chapter 11. Well, actually, I'm, I was trying to skip stuff, and I can't. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And if you're wondering how to find that, just look at Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, the General Electric Power Company. That's, some guy told me that years ago. That's how he keeps those four books straight, the General Electric Power Company. And it works. <laughs> Your brain goes, okay, GEPC. <coughs> Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3, um, verse 9 says, And being found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteous which is of the righteousness which is of God by faith. How did that righteousness come? It came by faith. It is the righteousness of God. It's not the righteousness of human effort or human ability or human works. Now that does not mean that once you're born again, come into the kingdom of God and come into the family of God, you don't do good stuff. You don't uh, work towards doing good works. You know, some people, some people are trying to teach grace to the extent that when you're saved, you, you know, you don't, you know, it doesn't matter what you do or don't do because you're under grace and you're saved by grace and you're under grace. It's irrelevant to your position, standing, uh, relationship, whatever with God. What you do or don't do has absolutely no bearing on it whatsoever. And I, I beg the difference. The scripture paints a much different picture in New Testament writing. But we're not going down there. Hallelujah. Uh, the, we have the righteousness which is from God by faith. Amen. And I guess what the New King James, the New King James states, um, but that which, through, which is through faith, the righteousness which is from God by faith, um, which is, of, you know, pretty much said the same thing there. Uh, how do we get faith? Where does faith come from? What does the believer do 
to obtain and receive faith. Amen. Well, now understand how important faith is. If we're going to if we're going to uh, pursue having faith or living by faith, um, we need to understand this. Hebrews eleven six says. Look, let's look over there. I'm, I'm going to get. I'm going to train myself to make us all always go to the scripture. It'll take you longer. Oh well. It's, you'll see it yourself. Amen. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is what? What? I'm under grace. Well, I can't help if you're under grace. Without faith, it's impossible. It is impossible to please him. Wow. That's a bold, brash statement. That without faith, it is impossible to please God. Let me say this. You can't please God because you helped 400,000 little old ladies across the street or gave $10 billion to the church. Faith is what pleases God. The lifestyle of faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For they that cometh to God must. I, I like when I see scriptures that there's no, um, there's no gray area. There's no skirting the issue. There's no reinterpreting it in the light of your hot new revelation. They that come with God must believe. Must believe. Everybody say must believe. Must believe. believe what? That he is. Ha ha ha. Praise God. Amen. And that he is the re a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Now notice that you come to God and you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder Amen. of them that diligently seek him. What's that mean? You got people going around teaching you're going to get blessed whether you do anything or not. He says here he rewards those that diligently seek him. Apparently what you do has an effect on what you get. Amen. Amen. What you do does have an effect on what you get. Amen. So he says here, God, uh, Hebrews 11, 6. Amen. And of course, Philippians 3, 9. Show us that God demands faith. Everybody say, God demands faith. You can write that by Hebrews 11, 6. God's demand of faith. Amen. God demands faith. Now, the good thing about God is he doesn't demand something of us. He doesn't make provision for us to have. He's not an unjust God. In other words, he doesn't say you have to have faith and then doesn't give you the ability to have that faith or to function in that faith. Amen. You know, we're to believe on Jesus so we can become children of God. But as to many as received him, to them gave he, for John, the first chapter says, the gospel of John. You know, to, the, to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. You see, God doesn't demand something of you that, if, that he doesn't make provision for you to function and operate in. Amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I, I don't have this in my notes right here in this particular part. I probably, I'm sure I have it later on further down. Um, but, you know, the scripture says this God has dealt to every man. The measure of faith. Everybody has a measure. Everybody say everybody has a measure. Amen. Of the God kind of faith. Well, what kind of faith is that? Well, the Bible tells us in the Hebrews, the first chapter, that God created the world by that faith. I got a measure of the faith that God used to create the universe. Amen. Amen? Romans 12, 3. Uh, God has got, dealt to everybody the measure of faith. Amen. Amen. Yeah, not a measure, but the measure. I, so, so say that. Say, I have the measure of the faith that God used to create the universe. <laughs> Praise God. All the things that says God did by faith, we have the measure of that. God's dealt to us the measure of faith. Amen. So every believer... You know, some people say, oh, I wish I could operate in faith. I wish I could use faith. I wish I had the faith that was necessary. But the Bible says, if you're a believer, praise God, in Romans 12, 3, you've been dealt the measure of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. 
In other words, you've been given all the faith you need to be able to, and listen, you understand, uh, when I was born as a child, I was given all the muscles and the bones I need. Amen. Now, as I develop, they grow, they get stronger. Amen. My muscle, num number of muscles don't increase. Muscle mass can increase by exercise. I had the same muscles. You can lose weight and lose muscle mass, but the same muscles are there. Amen. I was given the measure of muscles. I was given the measure of bones. By, by exercise and proper diet, I can increase their effectiveness and be stronger in them. Amen. Amen. God's dealt to every person the measure of faith. And by exercising your faith and by the proper biblical spiritual nutrition, you can develop stronger faith. Amen. Amen. This more use this that's useful and beneficial. Praise God. Everybody say glory to God. So God's dealt to us the measure of faith. Now what do we do to increase or, or continue in that faith? Well, if you look over in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. We'll start reading um, down in verse 8. It says, what saith it? The word is nigh thee. They're close to you. Even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith. Which we preach. Now, I, I, I just always get amazed at people who go around and, and jump on tangents and say the only, the only thing Paul preached was the gospel of grace. Paul said it was called it the word of faith. Now, he did call it the gospel of grace. But he also called it the word of faith. Amen. He called it the gospel of grace and he called it the word of faith. Well, which is it? This both. Amen. I said it's both. The gospel of the grace, we're under his grace, but we live it by faith. And so we, get, we don't need to get on tangents and extremes about things off of one little statement and try to build entire um, uh, theological castles out of a phraseology uh, and it's at the exclusion of everything else. You'll get into error. You'll get into excess. No, we need to stay with the whole word, the whole counsel. Amen. Thank God it is the gospel of grace, but it's also the word of faith which we preach. Yeah. Amen. Why? Well, how can it be both? Because there's a manward side and there's a Godward side. God's, the Godward side is the grace of God. The manward side is the word of faith side. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We live on the faith side. God's the grace side. He makes the provision. We receive it by faith. We walk in it by faith. His, understand this. His grace is an empowerment and, and, and a strengthening. Hallelujah. And it, and it's, it works in us. And we went over that recently when we taught in the book of Ephesians. So it says, that, which is the word of faith which we preach. And here's how it works. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Again, saved is sozo here. So this really works in every arena that, that salvation covers. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto soterius, the Greek noun of sozo. Soterius is in the sozo word group. It is the noun of the, of the verb sozo. Hallelujah. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. <clears throat> so whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be sozo, or saved. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach shall they, except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But, all, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith... Go look and you, when you read your Bible sometime, just take some kind of highlighter and underline everywhere that the Old Testament's quoted. That was their Bible. They were quoting Old Testament scripture to substantiate, undergird, or validate what they were preaching. Amen. Some people, you know, and, I, and I'll get to something here in a little while. 
Um, but Isaiah saith, or Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Thank God for his word. Amen? So God deals, deals to us the measure of faith. But then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is increased. Faith for certain things um, to function and operate and to act upon um, comes out of the word of God. The written word. Uh, there's a real big push. Now, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've never seen anything like this in my lifetime. I'm 53 years old. Now, I grew up in church. I've been saved since 1979. I was 21, year old, 21 years old when I got saved. I've been saved 32 years. Um, I've been all over the world. I've heard a lot of things. I've heard a lot of false doctrine, but 99% of what I used to, I've ever heard came outside the church. Or those claiming to be in the church, you know, those, you know, we just knew they were a cult. They weren't in the. I am telling you, I'm hearing stuff now. Know you not in the last days? Amen. Perilous times shall come. Shall we, for there will be seducing, seducing spirits and doctrines of the devils. Amen. The biggest thing now, right on the heels of this big radical grace push by people who've latched on to the radical grace push is now coming that the written word does not, is not absolute authority. That your revelation from Jesus is your authority. That people who don't have Bibles live as good or better Christian lives than those who, in the West who have Bibles. That, um, that it is a um, supposed fall of man that all Christians are saved because Jesus died for everybody that we, that we as Christians just have a special mission but everybody's saved because Jesus shed his blood for everybody he's coming out of Africa and India and they're raising up Bible schools and teaching this <coughs> that you don't need your Bible oh I, I well I read my Bible but you know it, it's you know it's, it's, and that's what they say. That. Well, I, I read the Bible. But those who don't have to have, don't have a Bible, don't have to have a Bible because, you know, and, and the all, all thing is everybody was illiterate in the old times and they didn't have a Bible and, and uh, therefore, uh, and they lived good lives. So we don't have to have a Bible. In other words, you cannot, what happens here? Now, faith comes by hearing and hearing by what the Word says. And you deny, and don't you, can't you see Satan operation up behind all this? And you say that the word of God's not, <coughs> it's, it's Jesus. We look into Jesus. Everything comes out of Jesus. I'm not, I am not um, belittling the lordship and the position of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he himself, um, find this for me. It's not in my notes. I'm over here on this. But remember when he walked with the uh, disciples on the road uh, after his resurrection? And uh, they, he, hid, he hid himself from them. He didn't reveal himself to them. And um, the Bible says he started with Moses and the law and, and showed that he was the Christ. I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. What did he, he didn't go and say, I, here, here's revelation from me that I'm the Christ. That you can live a successful life without those scriptures. I, all, you, all you need is me. He took the word of God, the written word of God, and proved he was the Christ. From the word. That's going to have to be after his resurrection. <laughs> Luke, Luke, Luke. All right, Luke, Luke 24, verse 13, starting there. And behold, one of them, which the same day went to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score four furlongs. That's about 60 furlongs, however furlong was. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. And behold, their eyes, uh, and their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are those that you have with one another? As you walk in are sad. He said to them, One... Um, 
and, and one and the one of them wh- whose name was Cleopas answering said art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hath not known the things which are come to pass there in these days and he said unto them what things and they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth which was a prophet mighty indeed in word <coughs> <clears throat> Hallelujah. Mighty indeed in word before God and the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been that they should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were come. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they seen a vision of angels, which said, unto, said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it, even as so as the woman had seen said um, but they him they saw not and then he said unto them O fools and slow of heart to believe all the prophets all that the prophets have spoken he didn't he didn't rela- he did not rebuke them for not believing the vision yeah. he rebuked them for not believing the word O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. How do you know what the prophets spoke? They wrote it down. It became the Bible. It was part of the, it was part of the Bible. Their Bible. Torah or whatever. I forget. I think the Torah. And listen to this. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and entered into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. <clears throat> now, according to what's going on being taught now, what's this got to do with faith? Hang with me. I'll get to it. Okay? He could have simply unveiled himself and said, I'm the Christ. Yeah. Believe it, because I now have revealed myself to you. But Jesus didn't do that. First, he rebuked them for not believing the written word. Did did say a thing about the vision. They should have believed it. They should have believed the vision because the prophets had said it would happen. Y'all getting this? So what does that mean? Visions and revelations should be in line with what the words already said. (coughs) Amen. I said amen. Amen. And then when Jesus began the process of correcting them, he did not say, you just need the resurrected Christ. You don't need the Bible anymore. He went to Moses and the prophets and expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Praise God. I said praise God. Amen? Amen. And so why? So their faith wouldn't be in an event. Their faith would be in the word. And here's the danger of what we're experiencing right now. This new thing that's going around where people are denying the Bible. You know, they, they're basically saying that the Bible is a, you know, it's a good book to read. It's okay to read. But I'm going to tell you, you don't have to have the Bible. You can live victor. Uh, one guy today uh, said something along the lines of um, uh, that, that these people over here in these other countries are living more fruitful and better lives than Western Christians are. And of course, my, my statement back, and I didn't say anything. I just didn't get involved because I, I you know, let the ignorant be ignorant still. Um, but how do you judge their living better lives? What are you What are you basing that on? On works, but you don't believe in works because you're under grace. What are you basing it on? What do you have as a measuring stick? To determine that they're living a better Christian life than the Christians with the Bible. That's weird. If you don't believe in works, because you're under grace. Now, but that's not the real danger. Here's the real danger in this. 
Now, number one, God said that we must, that, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Uh, two, the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Three, it says it's impossible to please him without faith. And they're working towards taking away from everyone the very thing that produces the faith. The word of God. And denying its authority and um, place, purpose. Amen. So, and, and further, to add on to this, once you remove the Bible, what have you removed? You've removed back the, that which we measure everything against. Then, no matter what I teach, I can say I have by revelation. Christ showed me this. This is what it means to have Christ in you. I can now teach anything and there's no, there's no correction. There's nothing to measure it against. Because I have a revelation. Let me tell you something. Well said, Paul, to Timothy. Are you here? Y'all here, you're going home. He said, well. Verse, uh, chapter 4, 2 Timothy, chapter 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe. Now let me say something. Not everything, every false doctrine is going to be around, sent around forbidding to marry and abstaining from meats. That's just one, that was just something he was sharing. He said there's going to be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and the people's conscience will be seared. Amen? Are you here? With a hot iron. When you start denying the authority of written scripture, your conscience has been seared. Because the Word of God is... It, now, let me say this. The living Christ... Now, some people say, well, the letter, you know, well, the, the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. If you preach the Word as legalism and bondage, that's the letter. If you preach it as the living book that is, the Word of God is a living thing. Amen? It's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It's alive. It's full of the life of God. The written word preached under the anointing and, and, and read and meditated upon with the Holy Ghost, uh, with the anointing involved, will, will separate the soul from the spirit. Amen. And will discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. I said amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, 12 verse 4 says that. But if we start going, I, well, I've got, I've got revelation. I, I, I get everything from Jesus. I have a revelation from Jesus. Well, then we're going to start having things like God told me. God told me I could have your wife. Yeah. He showed me that she's more important to me than she is to you. Well, the Bible said, I don't care. That I can't help that. I have a special revelation. The Bible, you know, we don't, we don't live according to what the Bible says. We live according to what Jesus does in us. It's, it's, it's all on its way in a certain direction. <coughs> I said it's all its way in a certain direction. Well, um, what do we do? Well, we as, as, as believers have to understand the, the, the importance, the authority. Paul, um, not Paul, Peter. Peter wrote, and I'm way off my nose, but that's all right. We'll get back on the next week. Okay, in 2 Peter chapter 1. And then, and then I got to find the other place. <laughs> if 
tell me all scripture is profitable. I, yeah, I'm, I'm doing stuff that's not in my notes, and so I'm, I'm kind of um, Timothy. Timothy. You hold your place to Second Peter one. I'm, I'm going to read that. Second Timothy three sixteen be the second place we get. Next place we come. Now let's 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 let's, wait, wait, wait. let's go let's go to Timothy. Let's go to Timothy first. All scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable. No, let's back up, back up, back up. Verse 14. But continue thou in the things that thou hast learned as thou hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Amen. Not, not, listen. He did, I noticed it's interesting he used scriptures instead of word. Because when he used the word word, they would often say the word means Jesus because he's the Logos. I don't think God accidentally called it Holy Scriptures here. Right. He's validating the written word. Yeah. Amen? As from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Oh, for what? For doctrine. Uh, for reproof. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Notice he said here that the scriptures are able to make him wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And then he says it's, it's all given by inspiration of God and it's profitable. Amen. Yeah. Oh yeah, but now we have the resurrected Jesus. We just need the, 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 the visions and the, the prophecies that come out of the realm of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, over here in First Peter, or Second Peter chapter 1, verse 14, For knowing that surely I must put off this, my tabernacle, Peter talking about his body, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made none unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now listen, now what did he say they were? What did he say they were? Yeah, but what did, he, what did Peter say that, that they, the, the apostles, were? Eyewitnesses. Eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard. Woo! When we were in his hymn in the holy mount. Stop. Don't read any further. They declare that what? They were eyewitnesses of his majesty. They were with him in the mountain when they heard the voice of God from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. They were with him in the holy mount. Wow. Amen. Stop. Now you got people going around saying we just, it's the Jesus in us. It's the revelation he gives us. We got Christ in us. You don't have to have a Bible. Verse 19. We also we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Stop. Yeah. Right. They were in the mount when Jesus was transfigured and heard the audible voice of God say, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And Peter comes right behind that and says, But we have a more sure word of prophecy. Then what? <clears throat> the audible voice they heard in the mount. I said the audible voice they heard in the mount. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that ye take heed. Under what? Not to the audible voice. If we got a more sure word of prophecy, he said take heed to the more sure word. That's the context. That's right. 
as a, and, and to a light that shineth in the dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart, knowing this first, for that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Wow. You can't get any plainer than that. You cannot come and say, I've got a revelation from Jesus. It's outside the Word of God that contradicts the Word of God, that doesn't sustain the teachings of the written Word of God and say, that's, I live by that, I don't need the Bible. I have a more sure word of prophecy. Now you go ahead and be dumb and get into error and get yourself all messed up if you're determined to go that way. But I am telling you, don't you fall for it. And don't you, if you, show, you hear somebody teach you, turn them off. Yeah. They're, they're, they're of the wrong spirit. Yeah. Oh, they're good brother. They love the Lord. I'm sorry. You turn them off. Yeah. If they love the Lord, they would love his word. Yeah. That's right. I said, if they loved the Lord, they would love his word. They love people. They would love his word. Yes. Yeah. And want to give the people the word. What about people who can't read? You, you, still, you still preach what the word. Give them the word. Buy them audio tapes. What do you think? Uh, Wycliffe, um, Bible translators. They, they, they've known for centuries the importance of the written word. They send people in and taught them how to go in and hear language. People didn't even have a written language. Right. Learn their language. Learn and create a written language and then translate the Bible into their written language. Man. That was their whole mission was to learn the language, create a language for the express purpose of giving them the Bible in a written form. Why? Because of the importance of the scriptures. Amen. The importance of the scriptures. I said the importance of the scriptures. So be, be very, very, I mean, listen, I, I, I talked with a friend of mine over there on Facebook. I said, you know, uh, with, with YouTube and Facebook and social networks and the Internet, it's, you know, false doctrines, this, this kind of stuff would have sat in some little village somewhere and been born and died and never made it 20 miles away from there. 30 years ago. Right, 19, 30 years ago. It was 20 years ago. It never made it out of the little pocket. Now it can be spread all over the world in moments. I'm, talk, I'm, not, I'm not talking days. I'm talking moments. It can be posted on Facebook and it's anywhere in the world you can see it if you have access to that at that point, moment. The moment it's posted, you have access to it. We're talking uh, about, about satellite link ups and bouncing and stuff like that. You're talking maybe 10 seconds of delay. That'll be about a good estimation, Bill. 10, 15 second delay from the time it's actually posted where it is to where anybody in the world off the satellites or whatever, you know, the, the, net, the, the net servers or whatever actually could see it. So instead of talking about 10 or 15 years and actually dying out, we're talking 10 or 15 seconds. Stuff can be shared all over the world. And the, the, the looniest stuff is coming out. Well, what's its whole purpose? If we begin to do, do away with the, the, the authority of the written word and begin to propagate this, you know, um, intimate relationship with Jesus with no word involved, then in, you know, what did, what did uh, Paul say over to the Corinthian church of Corinth? There are many voices and none without signification. In other words, every, they're significant. And that Satan himself can appear as an angel of light. Well, how are you going to know if he's an angel of light or if he's of God? How would you know? You're going to have to be able to judge it by the word of God. It'll take the written word to prove it out. Amen. I said it'll take the written word to prove it out. We're living, we're living in a time that's imperative. See, this, 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 is detri this could be de devastating to the walk of faith for people. If they start taking hold of this and start acting on this and start believing along this lines. We're talking about some serious danger, t danger territory here. 
where people are, are beginning will, will begin to um, say, "Well, I, 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 I don't, I, I'm sorry. I'm, the, the, you know, well, yeah, the Bible is a good book, but I don't live by that. I live by the Jesus in me." And see, there's enough truth in that. I live by the Jesus in me too. But the Jesus in me is revealed to me through the written word. And he speaks to me out of his word. And, and it'd be interesting, how are you going to establish the, the every word out of the mouth of two or three witnesses if you only live by the Jesus in you? That went over big. Anyway. So, Peter says that the scriptures are a more sure word of prophecy than being with Jesus when he was transfigured and hearing God the Father speak audibly and told them to take heed. <laughs> I just think that's powerful. That validates the written word as authority. Amen. Now there is a unique relationship between the living resurrected Christ and the living word. But you cannot have the living resurrected Christ and function in that, that place with him without his living word. And people use the excuse, you know, well, but people who can't read. Just read them what the scripture says and just read it, the scripture. Don't, don't, even, don't even editorialize. Give them the word. Amen. So I, I think I've shown you enough here just with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Paul writing to Timothy and then Peter writing to the church. Um, if it was going to be a matter of just, you know, a, a, a revelation outside of the word of God, we would have seen it here. But it's not there. The Lord Jesus Christ himself didn't even do that. He quoted the scriptures. I said the Lord Jesus Christ himself didn't do that. He quoted and expounded upon the scriptures. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Well, so let's go back here. <laughs> it's, it's, wow. That was, worth the, that was worth the trip to church tonight. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I said amen. amen. Um, so if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This, and the reason I said this is, listen, when, you understand that when I hit something like that and bang on that and, 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 and it's because it's a dangerous thing out there and it's spreading. Amen. Yeah. Now, what was it, two years ago I did the teaching, that 12 service or 12 sermon series on grace of God, you know, grace, what it is, what it isn't. And then about a year later it hit full force in, the, in, in America on Christian television to the point that the, the, the guy on the leading Christian television station said, this is the most important message we've ever heard. We're going to do everything we can to, pr to spread it. Well, I got people, people in our church who sat in those series that when that series, when they start hearing that, they were already prepared. Yeah. Oh, well, Pastor Ed, share from the Word of God this, and the Word of God said that, and the Word of God said this. They're already ready. Amen. Yeah. That's, see, seduction takes place oftentimes in ignorance. I mean, even the natural things. Girls get seduced by guys because he tells me he loves them, and they ain't got enough sense to know he don't love them. Ignorance got him in trouble. Isn't that right, Mr. C? That's wisdom, isn't it, sir? Girls get fall for some guy saying, I love you and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> are, your, are your headphones working good? Uh, all right. The scratching? Static. We got static on his headphones. We got to get that fixed. I don't know how we're going to get it fixed. Bless God, if we have to run a jack over there and plug in the wall. <laughs> Hallelujah. All righty. Um, but getting seduced, what did it say? In the last days, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. It sounds so good. 
it sounds so good. Oh, we don't have to read our Bibles. We don't even need a Bible. We just need to listen to the Christ in us. Seduced. Really, it's the caters to the flesh. Why? Because the flesh is a lazy bum. Hello? Your flesh would have you at, at, at Sam's on the corner every day. If you gave into it. Hello? Coming up with, with different signs. Vietnam vet, diabetic, wife died, kids, got a slew of kids, hadn't eaten in a month. God bless you. Jesus is Lord. Your flesh will have you right there. <laughs> Amen? Things cater to the flesh. Seducing spirits cater to the flesh. So you don't have to, you don't, you don't need to go to church. You don't need to do anything. Don't need to tithe. Don't need to give. Oh, don't even need to read our Bibles because we got the living Christ in us and he, he, he'll just get us everything. If we need something, he'll get it to us. But that's, that's all we need. You're just going to get yourself in trouble. It's just not worth the trouble you're going to get in because it's going to take you a lot more to get out.